Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for being God all by yourself, sitting high and looking low, living within us, causing us to be higher than what we thought we were in the first place. Hallelujah. Thank you for inviting us to the table, inviting us to accept your son, Jesus Christ, and live under the power of his name and his blood and the work at the cross. Father God, you are awesome. Baruch Atah Adonai, you're always awesome. We love you forever. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for opening up our eyes when our eyes need to be opened. We thank you for healing us whenever we need healing in our lives. No matter what type of healing that it is, you are within reach. You are attainable. And we thank you for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for taking care of us, waking us up yet another morning. We ask that you take care of our families and for those uh, that uh, are having a hard time accepting you. Father God, we ask that you soften their hearts. Jesus, speak to them in their dreams. Speak to them in their daily activity and show them that you are real. Hallelujah. We want our relatives and our loved ones to go with us as well and celebrate in heaven what you've been teaching us all these years in your word. You're awesome. Holy Spirit of God, use me with this word today, cause somebody to come to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you for your word that you're about to give us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, we'll be talking about suspicion. Being suspicious. Do you know anybody that is suspicious? We're going to talk about that today. You know, when you're in Jesus Christ, when you have the Lord in you, amen, you are going to be open, you're going to be free, you're going to be non-judgmental, you're going to be happy, you're going to make people feel good wherever you go, right? And you're going to smile at people, and people will smile back. I don't know if you ever tried that or not. I tried it myself. And when you smile at people, people do smile back. Amen. God wants us to be happy and approachable and attainable at all times. Of course, there's personal times where we have to take care of personal business and our families or whatever. Okay. But most of the time, okay, when you step out of your own home, okay, and even in your own home, you should be wide open and joyful. You know, a joy attracts people, right? Amen. So let's be joyful. Let's try to be more joyful. It's easy for somebody to go down and be depressed and be mean or tired or something, you know, but God doesn't want us to live that way. And God doesn't want us to be suspicious people. Have you ever seen somebody with a, uh, they seem nice. They seem pretty, pretty okay, pretty good, but there's just something about them. <laughs> Did you ever hear anybody say that? They're suspicious. There is something there that people are able to feel somehow, but can't put their finger on it. Amen. So, when we are looking at the word suspicion, it says here, I like to go into the dictionary and get the, the uh, meaning of the word. It says, an act or an instance of suspecting something wrong without proof. A barely detectable amount, distrust, doubt, okay, misgiving, mistrust. Now, here is suspicious. When someone is suspicious, okay, it says open to or arousing suspicion, arousing that distrust. Do you know anybody who, who arouses people's distrust? Unusually so. Inclined to suspect, showing suspicion, debatable. How many people do you know who are always debatable? Drama kings, drama queens, amen. There's always, always some type of negative drama going out. Almost like they don't have it, like they have a restless spirit. Fishy. I'm sure you heard that term before. Equivocal, problematic, always, always problem, some kind of problem. The whole world has to stop for them because there's always something going on. But yet, when you have a problem, they don't have time to listen to yours. You're complaining. <laughs> Amen. How many of you, you ever gone through that? Have you ever gone through that? 
all right, where some, you're always hearing somebody else's problems, but then when something is going on with you, they don't have time to listen. Questionable, shady. How many people do you know are shady? Shaky, suspect. Distrustful, doubtful, dubious, skeptical, undecided. How many people do you know cannot seem to make a decision to save their soul? Cannot make, you know, the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. And some of these people are so confused, it's hard for them to make a decision. They're unsettled, unsure. How many people have you seen are unsettled? They just have unsettled uh, and attitudes about them. Amen. This is being suspicious. This is suspicion. Okay, people who are suspicious. Amen. And you know, the Bible tells us so many times to be careful of these kind of people. Now, I'm not talking about them like they have leprosy. Okay, don't don't back off. Your people always say, I feed so-and-so with a long handle spoon. That's what we pray for them. Amen. We pray for people. Keep them in prayer because it is not that person that you are having a problem with. It is the suspicion, the suspiciousness, the, the, the evil spirits that could be um, bumping up against them and, and, and tormenting them. It just like uh, the Apostle Paul went through. You know, there are some people that are so tormented, okay, that they cannot uh, find joy. It's hard for them that they're always sad. They cannot find joy. What is that word they use? Melancholy? Okay, now let's start out with, I'll, I'll read a couple scriptures. I'll start from Genesis 6-5. And we're talking about evil thoughts, the carnal mind, evil imaginations. Okay, these are people who use the carnal mind. They have so much, um, they use their carnal mind so much that it's hard for them to get spiritual, okay, to, to sit down with the Word of God and talk to God and allow the Holy Spirit to teach them. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then Genesis eleven six. See, the thoughts of someone's heart is evil continually. And then Genesis eleven six, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. People became evil. God said the people are now one, and they all have one language, and, and they, they nothing will be restrained from them. All right? And there notice he says which they have imagined to do. Whatever these people imagine in their minds goes down into their heart and that thing they become. That's why we have to be very, very careful with our thoughts, with what goes through our mind, what we say, what we think. You know, if whenever that devil comes to you and tells you negative things about yourself, you bind him in Jesus' name and just tell him, you got to leave right now in Jesus' name. I'm not listening to you. Amen. You are not the author nor the finisher of my faith. Amen. See, we have to command our mind to listen to us. We have to command our body. When you command your mind to do good, your body's going to follow. And half of those physical problems that you've been having, not only just natural problems, but spiritual problems as well, that you've been having are going to follow. And, and the, good, the goodness of the Lord is going to enter you and healing is going to enter you. And you will find that you have less problems than you have before because you've been commanding your thoughts to be good and pure. Amen. Let's look at Psalm 38, 12. It's pretty deep. Psalm 38, 12 says, They also that seek after my life lay snares for me, and they that seek my heart speak mischievous things, and imagine deceits all the day long. Amen. Now, this is a king saying this. Okay, they have, they also that seek after my life lay, see, Suspicious people will lay snares for you. People who have jealousy, envy, okay, 
and they just have something out for you. You could you could tell no matter how much they speak to you or how they smile at you, you could tell something there is not right. You just can't seem to get totally get along with them. It's it's hard. You have a hard relationship with them. People who are suspicious, they have a suspicious character, a suspicious attitude, lay snares for people. They are unrested and they want you to be unrested as well. Amen. And it says, and they seek my hurt. They're hurt. You ever hear that term? Hurt people hurt people. And that's very true. And this is what people do. Instead of them giving their problems to the Lord and allowing God to heal them and to heal their situations, they continue to operate in the natural, thinking that their power alone is going to cause everything to be okay. And it's not. They speak mischievous things. The way they talk is like they're always up to something. They don't talk godly. They don't talk like with a holy language. They're always mischievous, always into something, always thinking dirty thoughts, always thinking dark thoughts. How many people do you know they're like that thinking? It seems like everything comes out of their mouth is, is foul somehow. Mm. And they imagine deceits all day long. All day long, these people are thinking something that is anti-government, anti-Christ, <laughs> anti-good. My God, nothing can grow around them because they're constantly chopping growth. No matter where they go, nothing is going to grow around them. They're robbers. They're thieves, and they always operate in deceit. Amen? And then uh, Proverbs 6.18 says, A heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. They're always imagining something mischievous. Their feet are always running to mischief. You, ever, you know, years ago, watching TV, I remember some friends of mine used to always say, there's just certain folks, you're watching TV and they hear a sound or something around a corner, and instead of running from the sound, they run to it. <laughs> you know, just always want to be in something. You know, they instead of running to peace, they run from it. I remember I watched a movie years ago where the woman told her son, I think it was the uh, Raisins in the Sun, I can't think of what that movie was called, but the woman told her son, she said, son, anytime a man runs from his home to get peace, something is wrong. They have created so much mess in their nest that they have to fly away. And, and when they fly away, the only reason they're flying away is because they're looking for something else to get into. Amen. Take care of home before, like the song says, sweep under your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Amen. They should cleanse their home. Pray to the Lord. And they're always running to something else, always tipping around the corner. You ever see a person that's just un, with an unsettled spirit? They're always shifting and tipping, and it's like like unrested. You know, years ago in a, a spooky movies, they always said that the ghosts came back because they had unfinished business. They're like <laughs> they're like a I don't know a a a, a ghoul that doesn't hasn't you know finished what they were supposed to finish while they were living, so they come back. Amen. Restless spirits always running into mischief. Something happens down the street, they got to go see what it is. You know? Amen. And some people, just like even church, they won't even go to a church until they find out something's going on with the pastor or one of the choir members or somebody. they got to go and find out how the story's going to end. See? Suspicious people. They're not going to the church to hear the word of God. They're going to the church to find out the ending of this 
horrible story, whatever's happening in that church. Ezekiel 8.12 Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. Now, he's talking about the people of Israel here who they, they, they do whatever they want to do and they're, they're walking around in their darkness and, and they get in their own chambers and they do whatever they want and you know, it's, it's just do it time, you know, whatever you want to do, just do it, which is actually witchcraft. And they think, well, God left the earth. He's forsaken the earth. Because they do not open up their hearts to God and spend time in the Word and talk to the Lord, because they cut that cord, they think that God cut it and left, and God didn't cut it. He's waiting for them to contact Him, to love Him, to show Him that they love Him, that they trust Him. And instead of, see, this is another thing suspicious people do, they are always blaming the right person. The person who is right, the person who lives right. They're wrong, and they don't want anybody else to be right either. So here we go. We have people who are blaming God for forsaking the earth, and God never left them. They say, well, God's not talking to me. You know, people with short, do you ever see a person with short patience? They have short patience and they ask the Lord for something and they don't get it in their time. And so they give up and they just go buck wild. This is what a suspicious person does, quick to run towards evil. They go buck wild and they're like, well, God didn't give it to me, so he must not love me, so I'm just going to go out and do whatever I want to do. And there's a lot of people that got on drugs. And a lot of people that stay in bars until closing time instead of going home to their husbands or their wives and their children. There's a lot of people that have lost good jobs, people that can't control anything in their lives because of that unbelief. Well, God didn't do what I asked him to do. Unbelief. So I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. Oh, well, God didn't know you was only giving him three days and two hours and six minutes. You know? <laughs> Always running into mischief. Thinking that the Lord is not looking. Notice Ezekiel 8, 12. It says, the Lord sees us not. He's forsaken the earth. The Lord can't see me. I can do whatever I want to do. He can't see me. First of all, God created this earth. What makes what would make a person think that God can't see anything that you're doing? What makes a person think God can't see you under those covers? What makes a person think that God can't see them in their homes underneath their roof? He can't see them shooting up dope. He can't see them abusing children. He can't see them defiling their bodies one with another and by their, sometimes by themselves. They think God can't see. He sees everything. He created everything. God is not Superman. Okay? God is not Superman who could be hindered by kryptonite. When God sees through a wall, he sees through a wall. Nothing can stop him. You can have bed clothing made of kryptonite. God can still see you. <laughs> Amen. He made everything. Everything that has eons, ions, whatever they call it. Everything that, that has uh, molecules. Amen. Everything that is cre that has been created, God can see through it. He can see everything. Man might build a wall, and he can't see what's over that wall. But God can build a wall and see through it. Both sides. He sees what's happening on both sides of the wall and what's in the wall. Amen. And then Romans one twenty one. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain 
in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Here, here we have people who knew God, but they, they know God, okay, but they don't glorify him as God, as their God. There are people who say, yeah, I, I believe. Are you a believer? Do you believe in God? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, I believe. And and then you never see them praying. You never see them attending the, the, upon the sanctuary. You never see them um, holding hands with anybody. You never see them fixing anybody a sandwich. You never see them doing anything that would glorify God. But they believe in God. Oh, yes, we believe in God. Then why do you hate your neighbor over there? You believe in God, then why do you belong to that wicked group of people who are full of hatred and racism? How can you say you know God and you don't show that you know God? There are a lot of people calling themselves Christians that are going to be shocked when they get to heaven and see what's in heaven and you can read some of that in revelation <laughs> they're creatures with different uh, hundreds of eyes thousands of eyes or whatever and wait till they see the lord with hair like wool white hair like wool and that's just not talking about the color and feet of bronze Their foolish heart was darkened. It says here in Romans 121, they neither were they thankful, not thankful of anything. I got this on my own. If it wasn't for me, my strength, I wouldn't have anything. Not giving God the props for anything. Amen. They became vain in their imaginations. We did this. I'm the greatest. I do this. I'm, I'm better than so-and-so. Look at my awards. Look at my awards on the wall. Here, I'll send you a, a screenshot <laughs> of all my awards and accomplishments. But they act like God didn't help them with anything. And it says their foolish heart was darkened. Grossness. Have you ever seen people who are just always... I know a guy. I've been knowing him for years. And... My goodness, you can't hold a decent conversation with him. You try to respect him as an old friend. You knew him or whatever. You grew up with him or whatever. This man's mouth is horrible. And I'm not just talking about... I'm not just talking about... In fact, I don't even think he really cusses all that much. It's just... <laughs> not necessarily just a cursing. It's just his mouth, the way he talks about people. He's he, uh, you, you can almost feel daggers coming out of him. He's throwing daggers at everybody he talks about. This one is fat, and this one is black, and this one is pale white, and this one thinks he's this, and this one thinks she's that, and I never did like so-and-so, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, God, if you knew the things on him that I knew, blah, blah, blah. I know he's just nasty. He's just gross. And there are people like that. They have no godly understanding. They're just gross. Their heart is gross. That's why everything that comes up out of their mouth is gross. I friended this man on, I forgot how he talked after all these years and he wanted to friend me on Facebook and I forgot <laughs> I forgot I had forgotten you know all these years we're older now and I forgotten he talks like that so I friended him on Facebook and man he went to telling me how much weight I gained oh I didn't even know who you were you got so big girl what are you doing over there <laughs> you know just gross and I'm like oh god I forgot he talks like that and I unfriended him you know I you don't want to hang around people like that next thing you know you'll be questioning yourself feeling negative nothing positive or uplifting you know dullness hallelujah they're dull Romans 8 6 says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you get peace when you feed your spirit from the Father's Holy Spirit when you listen to the Spirit of God 
that is the only way to have peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace, life, long life, to live. The Word brings life and peace to us. Thinking carnally, thinking uh, fleshly all the time is bringing death upon you because our flesh is going to die. None of this nasty, dirty, uh, filthy flesh that we have is going to make it into heaven. I'm sorry, guys, but we're dropping this jacket at the gate. <laughs> right? We're dropping this jacket at the gate. This is not... Uh, what is it? No, uh, do, do, do not pass, go, and, and collect 200. Don't collect 200 or something. Mm -mm. You're dropping this jacket at the gate. We get new bodies, our glorified heavenly bodies. This mess is not getting in there. My God. And then Philippians 2, 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Have wise thoughts. Jesus didn't think negative. Jesus didn't, he wasn't gross. He didn't talk nasty. And you, look, let's put ourselves in Jesus' uh, shoes for a minute. How many men out there do you know could hang around um, a, uh, let's say former prostitutes, okay? How many men do you know could hang around women who had so many sexual demons, so many sexual spirits in them, how many men do you know would make it through that? Save them and work with them for three years or more. I don't know any. We have, we've had preachers, you hear every day, uh, uh, online or on on a TV or something where preachers are pre preachers are going down for that flesh. They think they can work with it. No, yeah, I can I can take care of her. I you know I'll 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 put Jesus on her. I know how to take care of that. And then every day this woman comes in with that tight red dress on, and low cut, talking in that whatever kind of sultry language is that what they call it? And 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 every day you know. They're putting themselves into um, unnecessary temptation. Give it to Jesus. Pray about it. Make sure you give it to the Lord. And every time you see that woman, do not accept them demons. Do not accept them spirits that are tempting you. And you tell her, um, sister, uh, come here for a minute. We need to talk. You know, you're a nice looking woman and everything, but, uh, you know, I, I just I hope you don't get mad at me or anything, but you need to change the way you present yourself before the Lord. <laughs> you know? But there's a lot of men that wouldn't do that. They lose that temptation. And I believe male and female alike, these, these uh, ministers go home and they're fighting in the privacy of their own bedrooms. And one wins. Either the spirit's going to win or the flesh is going to win. And every Sunday night they go home. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, some of them every day of the week until Sunday comes again. And they're wrestling with this thing and, and, and it's, it's pleasing. Sin is pleasurable even if just for a moment. So they take that demon home with them and they're wrestling in a privacy in their bedroom with that demon instead of binding it and rebuking it and trying to think on Philippians 4, 8, good things. Amen. And that's why they're not correcting these people because these people are feeding their flesh. And the next thing you know, something's happening with his sermons. Have you noticed that Reverend so-and-so's sermons are starting to sound a little dry lately? You sound a little confused. So something, the anointing seems like it's the anointing's gone, all right. Because he messed around and did what? Playing footsies with the enemy. With that suspicious person. A person who is a drama queen, drama king, whatever, male or female. And he thought that on his own, out of his own power, he could wrestle with that thing.
and it didn't work. Next thing you know, he's getting taken down. Church is breaking apart. I've been in so many churches in my life, a few, where they just, some of them split. The church just split. The church is splitting. Amen. Next thing you know, you're reading about him in the newspaper or on TV, and everybody's embarrassed of what happened. Amen. So, evil imagination causes suspicious characters. So, if you know anyone like that, pray for them. Amen. Just keep praying for them and binding and rebuking in Jesus' name. You got to give it to the Lord. Amen. And remember what it said when we were reading earlier. What it, uh, Romans 8, 6, for to be carnally minded is death. That's why this preacher's ministry died down. Carnally minded. He wouldn't tell sister so-and-so to change her ways and change them clothes. Amen. <laughs> he was enjoying that. Amen. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. Are you saved? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you haven't, just say this. Jesus, the Christ, forgive me of my sins. I accept you right now as my Lord and my Savior. Teach me your ways. And I thank you. Amen. Amen. And if you just said that, welcome to the family of God. Go find a Bible-believing church. Amen. That t preaches Old and New Testament. Amen. Amen. Jesus, if you look in the Bible, Jesus read the Old T, the OT, the Old Testament. And he made the New Testament. The New Testament was made because of him. So find a church that preaches the entire Bible. Amen. The entire history of our folks, our people. Hallelujah. Believers. And learn of him. It's never too late. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Give you his grace. Peace. Hallelujah. Lift up his countenance upon you. It means when people look at you, they'll see God. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming on. Reverend Essie signing off. And remember, Jesus is always Lord. And to God be the glory for the things he has done. See you next Sunday. Amen.